Welcome. We're four Oreos away from heaven. You're listening to Fork and Bullshirt, the Good Place podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And we'll be the architects of your journey into the afterlife. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 11, The Book of Dugs. This episode was written by Kate Gersten, directed by Ken Whittingham, and it aired January 10th, 2019. We're here! We made it to the good place! Woo! There we go! <laughs> that's all we get to see. That's, that's it. For this week. <laughs> all right, let's jump right into the episode. In the Good Place Correspondence Center, the group's arrival alerts postal worker Gwendolyn. Michael poses as a neutral accountant, Janet imitates a neutral Janet, and the humans pretend they've won a contest. Weird contest. <laughs> <laughs> From Weird Contest Magazine. Uh-huh. Take it up with them. Um, okay, so we're in the Good Place, and of all places, we're in basically a postal office which really doesn't look like a post office just kind of looks like somebody's grandma's house it's like a visitor center almost that's what it kind of reminds me of but there's nothing like displaying no like visitor centers are usually full of plaques with the history of the town or whatever you are visiting Mm -hmm. um it has like you know a rack of um Postcards. Postcards. It has a rack of brochures from all kinds of activities you can do. That would have actually been kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Like, to see something like that would have been interesting, but this felt like literally like someone's grandma's house. Mm-hmm. To me, anyway. And so this is kind of on the outskirts of the good place. Yeah. We're, we're in the good place, but we're like not really in it. We're like in the foyer. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well,. Gwendolyn says something like we're 500 trillion miles north-south north of the main entrance or something. Maybe the main entrance has the, the you know, postcards and the brochures and right. all that stuff. <laughs> and the first thing that we learn about the good place is that it smells like whatever makes you happiest. Um, so right away, I asked some people online what the good place would smell like to them. And here's some of my favorite responses. One was ferrets and Belgian fries, but not sure if that would be a good mix-up, though. Oh, that's weird. I hate the way ferrets smell. Yeah, I feel like that's a common complaint about ferrets, that they smell bad. And also, what's Belgian fries? Is it... Are they different from French fries? They must be. Is that what, like, funnel cakes are made out of? Because that would be amazing. uh, Well, yeah, but combined with ferrets, not a great one. (laughs) No. That's weird. Um, You're weird. But you're not. We love you. No. Yeah. I thought it was a fun uh, answer. Number two was citrus, Disney water rides, and people telling me my hair looks pretty. Aw. That's nice. It's very wholesome. Um, Number three was the smell of my newborn baby's head. Very sweet. Mm. Number four was eastern deciduous. 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 Okay. Okay. Eastern deciduous forest in summer or hot apple cider in autumn. So I like that. It's kind of like it's combined with the season that it's in. I think Um, I said it wrong. I think it's deciduous. Deciduous? Oh my gosh. That's such a weird word. I can see it written down, but I can't pronounce it properly. (laughs) Basically, it just means that the trees are shedding their leaves and all that stuff. Um, And number five was... Wait, you mean to tell me that my entire afterlife is going to smell like my dog? And that's cute, but also, I hope your dog is not often wet, because gross. (laughs) What would the good place smell like to you, Jason? Complete and utter absolute lack of responsibility. (laughs) Wow! He says, having no children. (laughs) Okay. Hey, you asked. Oh, well, all right. Um, what about you? I don't know. Okay, in a, well, I can think of a few things, but they're all going to sound real cheesy. Um, so probably one of them would be you. <laughs> and the, shut up, I know. Um, Lame. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but, and another would be the smell and feel of that, like, crisp fall air when you go outside first thing in the morning and like there's dew and the leaves are a little bit crunchy and just 
it's something like magical, I swear, in the air. It just, it can never be replicated. Hmm. And that takes me back to like walking to the bus in the morning in high school. And I don't know. It was, it was a good time, I suppose, for me, hmm. for the most part. Um, yeah. So that would be probably one of the smells. Other smells would be like, I don't know, the smell of cookies baking, something like that. Now I'm thinking that maybe one of the smells could be the smell of that feeling when you're on the school bus with all your friends and you're going on a class trip somewhere that you're really looking forward to going to and you're all with you're with everybody that you like and you know you have a whole weekend to look forward to like I don't know a ski trip or something and yeah that's a great feeling that'd be a good smell oh yeah the feeling it would smell like the feeling of being on the bus going to Wonderland for the end of the year trip that we did every single year Wonderland, by the way, is a Canadian um, amusement park in Toronto, in case you didn't know. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Which would include what Eleanor loves. Uh, one of the things Eleanor loves about Cedar Rapids or whatever it is uh, she Typhoon likes. Typhoon Falls. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, the thick cloud of teen hormones, mm-hmm. for sure. So, it's a good segue into the episode. Eleanor going to the water park. Did she go with her mom? Oh, no. No. I'm guessing that there was a water park near her town and she went with, like, guys that she liked. How'd she get the money to get in there? Did she steal it from her mom? She probably scammed her way in. She, like, flirted her way in. Yeah, very likely. Most likely, yeah. It was, like, teenage boys in bathing suits looking at Eleanor in a bathing suit and... She was flirting with them and they let her in, I guess. Which would make Eleanor feel good because confidence and all that. Yep. For sure. The only thing that I don't like about this moment is that we get to Honey's elitism right back again. Like, it's just the thing that makes her happiest is whatever... Shutting the, the... The curtain closing between first class and economy on a plane and... I Like, it's funny, but... I don't love it because Tahani really should have grown more. I don't know. I just, it bothers me. It seems very like earth Tahani to like love that the most. Love the fact that she is wealthier than other people, that she's better somehow than other people. It just, it made her feel good in the past. And now I think that would change as she continues to grow and be better, but probably something so familiar that she's had to go through several times you know dozens if not hundreds of times being on a plane and just feels good it's hard it's hard to get rid of that Mm, i guess so i noticed they missed a a good three beat opportunity in the first opening like literally the opening minute and a half they did the um when jason mentions how there's a lack of go-karts and whatever and chidi says what and Eleanor says, don't. And then Eleanor <laughs> mentions how she's never got past March. And then Chidi says, what? And then Michael says, don't. I'm kind of, I was waiting for that third one to kind of bring in the, the title card and everything. But mm-hmm. it kind of missed it. I know. I noticed that too. And it made me think how similar Eleanor and Michael are. <laughs> yes. They're both like, don't. But it would have been nice at some point later in the episode if someone entirely different, like if Janet had said don't or Tawny had said don't, like it would have been nice. Or All even of them had just picked up that maybe habit. Maybe Gwendolyn, even just out of nowhere, just, yeah. It would have been kind of funny. at the end of the episode. <laughs> she can't, she's too nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, we get the joke, what kind of messed up place would turn away refugees for the second time. Mm-hmm. Um, last time we heard this line, it was spoken by Eleanor and it was right before they went on the, well, they were going to go, they thought on the magical air balloon to the good place. Yeah. So, so the writers are really hammering down the point of, come on, America, fix your problems. (laughs) Yeah. Don't turn away refugees. Yeah. Don't put them in camps. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Don't. Just don't. Um, and of course we get the wonderful Gwendolyn played by Nicole Byers. Um, if you don't already know, she's the host of Nailed It on Netflix. And I kind of <laughs> love that show just because 
It is so funny to see how bad people are at baking. And just, come on, guys. It's a recipe. Just follow the instructions. It's not impossible. And yet some people. Totally impossible. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I like seeing her because she's so bubbly. She's really sweet in this uh, episode. I feel like she was the perfect person to play Gwendolyn. And... I also liked her little logo on her shirt. The Postal Service logo is a Pegasus, which I thought was cool. Very cute. Yeah. Uh, The name Gwen is actually of Welsh descent, meaning holy and white. Oh. So, like, very pure and spiritually righteous. Oh, okay, cool. Kind of neat. Okay, so moving on. Gwendolyn takes them for a tour of the Correspondence Center, which includes a door to the good place and a telephone that connects you to whomever you want. Eleanor tries to break down the door, and Michael calls the committee. So immediately I thought of the official entrance and what it might look like, and I thought maybe it'd be cool if it was a little different for everyone, because I assume that people usually appear alone. Like when you die, you're sent to the good place. Just like in Michael's fake version of The Good Place, they arrived alone in a waiting area Mm -hmm. outside of an office. So I wonder if perhaps Tahani's official entrance would look like a red carpet Mm -hmm. um, with like almost like paparazzi, right? Like she would feel the scent like the center of attention and Jason's could feel like walking into... Uh, a giant football stadium or something and Chidi's would be like walking into a, a beautiful uh, library uh, and then Eleanor's could, I don't know, be walking into Rihanna concert or something. <laughs> but like something that would be tailored to the individual, I think that would be kind of cool. Right. So I'm interested to see if we will ever see that. And I also did really like the look of the door itself that we got in the correspondence center. Because it kind of has that classic beauty, the stained window. Um, the entire place itself really is just, like, very architecturally, like, pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, very old school as well. And there's, like, intricate paintings and stuff. So. Why do you... Okay, why do you think they chose a correspondence center instead of any other place? I don't know. I've been thinking about that. And it's... it's It must have been a, an obvious you know, transition point. Like, how do we get from the accountant's office to wherever? What do the accountants send to the good place? Mm -hmm. Mail. So what do... Maybe it has... Because it has to be something logical. Right. So they had to figure out what would go from point A to point B. And they just came up with a mail room in, uh, um, like, a... Uh, communications depot, which is a correspondence center. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Done. Yeah. Okay. I think now that I'm thinking about it, like it's great for the obvious jokes about Eleanor loving mailmen, but we're also like Michael has to communicate a point. He has to get his message to a certain group mm-hmm. of people. So I get like, it makes sense, I guess, thematically. Okay. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like it's a little weird that they don't have a Janet there? I think thought it was a little bizarre but maybe janets really are just kind of in neighborhoods except for neutral janets yeah i feel like only special places get janets or important places okay so then the correspondence center is just not that important right they've got they've got gwendolyn who works there and she probably just does her own thing and doesn't need anybody doesn't need a janet to help her out she apparently doesn't have a kitchen or a bathroom either well, I unless don't think the they... glowing bowl was actually a, to- a toilet, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I feel like they don't use the washroom. Like we didn't have one in the medium place, but we saw one in the accounting department, and they do have one in the bad place office area. So I don't know. It seems like maybe they could have had one, but yeah. it's a good thing, right? We didn't get another Janet, and poor Darcy Carden didn't have to play two characters again after playing like. Five of them or six of them last yeah, episode. Yeah, exactly. So we get a another version of Calm Cheaty mm-hmm. that we saw last episode with Janet's. And why do you think he's calm again this time? 
I think, honestly, that a big part of it is that he can smell absolute moral truth. There you go. That's <laughs> and what I, I was think thinking as well. That must be so calming to him because he's always, I mean, he's always like followed kind of a strict rules on earth and he's had an allegiance to certain like philosophies as well, but he's never been certain. There's never been like absolute moral truth. And now to finally like have that feeling just like constantly entering you, that sounds terrible, but Anyway, <laughs> just like to be able to take a big whiff and feel at ease with all of your choices, I suppose, would be a great feeling. Yeah. Plus, he has Eleanor, and Eleanor is kind of more in need at this moment. And so it's nice to have him be there to balance her out, and I think they just do that to each other. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, Chidi is no longer worried about how he feels about Eleanor as well, like... They've they've established what the relationship is. Yeah. They're okay with it. And there's no uncertainty. Like, he tells her very plainly, like, we love each other, and here we are, and this is actually kind of the best spot we've been in in a long time, so let's try and enjoy it. And I don't know. It just must be nice for him to kind of get a break. I think he's really uh, leaning into it. He does seem pretty different in this episode, but... It's a good different. Like, it's it's nice to see that progress for Chidi. Mm-hmm. I just hope it's not a flip-flop relationship where half the time Eleanor's freaking out and half the time <laughs> Chidi's freaking out and their whole role with each other is to, you know, anchor each other down. Yeah, I mean, we can't do that every episode, right? Nope. I mean, we can try. <laughs> I do really feel for Eleanor, too, in this moment. Like, being so close, but just so far at the same time would be incredibly frustrating. Plus, I really love the line, we're four Oreos away from heaven. That is a great line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's interesting that Eleanor doesn't think to maybe knock on the door or to look for a key. Because no, it's immediately she's... mashy smashy. Mashy smashy? Not... <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's looking for throwing lamps. <laughs> yeah, she's looking for throwing lamps. Um, But... Yeah, like, if she had tried maybe to knock on the door, would that have made a difference? Um, If she had looked around the room for a key instead of just trying to pick the lock and having everything turn into glitter. I don't know. I doubt it. Probably not. But it did pop into my head. I never even thought about that. What would happen if they knocked? Yeah. Would someone answer? Is someone literally on the other side? Putting glitter in the lock? I don't know. <laughs> Stealing Boy, everything that really Eleanor gets. Mess with them. <laughs> um, which, by the way, okay, glitter is awful and gets absolutely everywhere, and you can never get rid of it. So this had better be magically disappearing glitter because this is supposed to be the good place. And I object, sir. I object. <laughs> Yeah, you use glitter once and you wake up for the next 50 years with it in your bed. Literally. Okay, so tiny little uh, anecdote. Someone at work uh, or someone donated like magic silly putty or something like that at work and it's all glittery and one of my coworkers was playing with it and like three weeks later still managed to have glitter on his face. How? (laughs) Why? I don't know. So going back to Michael... Gwendolyn says it's against the rules for Michael to contact the committee himself. Why? Yeah, why? Why can't he use the phone? Are there, like, it, proper channels to go through? You have to fill out some forms, and then those forms need to be approved, and then those people who approve the form need to have other people approving them to approve things. Oh, that sounds like something that would actually happen. Yikes on bikes. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> as people on the internet would say thanks i hate it ah uh, yes <laughs> yeah she keeps mentioning like you can't use the phone it's against the rules but why? she doesn't say why so and michael doesn't even ask because he should know because he's an accountant mm-hmm. so it might blow his cover mm. but he could be like i've forgotten maybe you could help me out why can't i do this yeah. I guess we can infer. 
the good place is just a bureaucratic nightmare. Mm -hmm. I do like that Gwendolyn in that conversation uses the term thought experiment since we use it all the time when we're talking about philosophy. Mm -hmm. So it was nice. What a fun thought experiment. Yeah, she's so happy in the whole, like, I don't have a dog, <laughs> but out of an abundance of caution and politeness, I will totally go. Um, it's, it's cute. Jason asks Tahani for advice, and he tries to talk to Janet about their relationship. Janet refuses to engage because she needs to act neutral. The committee arrives to meet with Michael, and they agree to hear him out. Chidi calms down Eleanor by asking her out on a date. Ooh, feelings, romance, <laughs> smooching. <laughs> um, so Janet immediately tells Jason, like, I'm super embarrassed that you saw that and I can't talk about it because neutral Janets are supposed to not have feelings, which is just another example of how much she's grown over the series. Like in season one, she believed that she didn't have any feelings, right? She was like, I'm just here to help you out. I have no feelings of my own. I have no, you know, emotional ties to anyone. I have no history with anyone. It's just blah. I'm just I'm Janet. not worried I'm a about blank hurting slate. anybody's feelings. I have no feelings. Nobody can hurt mine. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, we can't overstate it enough how much she's grown. Yeah. We keep seeing more and more evidence of it every episode, which is great. We'd love to see it. I mean, we can only say it so many times. Yeah, for but... sure. And we get a nice kind of moment, too, at the end of the episode where Janet doesn't have to give us her best, best approximation of human crying. She just cries. Yeah. It's what episode really, was her? It's quite stunning. I like that moment quite a bit. And even I know, I know we pointed out a lot that she's changed, but that moment was kind of beautiful because of that. And she cried. Yeah. Like, and legit cried. Yeah. And that was back in season one when Michael was like, I'm the problem. Are you going to be okay? And and she just says, yeah, I'm going to be fine without you. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. But in case <laughs> this is my best approximation of human crying. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do miss that crying. It was funny. Yeah. Um, a thing I noticed is that the committee shows up in a glowing uh, dodecahedron covered in thumbs-up insignia. And so I looked up if there was any symbolism attached to that particular shape. And there is. Uh, the dodecahedron has been a source of metaphysical interest for at least 2,000 years. Like a crystal or gem, its facets and symmetries compel our eyes and hearts to observe life more deeply. Some have believed that the dodecahedron represents an idealized form of divine thought, will, or idea, and to contemplate the symbol was to engage in meditation upon the divine. Wow. So I feel like it was really, there was a really good reason they picked that. Like, there's some sort of mystical, religious, otherworldly element to that, sure. um, that shape. Dodecahedron, 12 sides. Mm -hmm. I like that Jason has been put in a similar situation with Eleanor when she finds out about the previous reboots and how her, her feelings about Chidi. And now Jason is put in a similar situation because he found out stuff about previous reboots about him and Janet. So they're kind of both like, how do I feel about this? It's a weird one because I don't feel like you should... I don't know if it makes people feel as though they have to have feelings for that person again. Like, oh, I had feelings for them in this one timeline. Um, and so obviously I must be in love with them now. Well, Jason says it quite, he says it in a, in a way that makes sense this episode. Yeah. He says, I don't know how I feel about her now. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't. He doesn't know because yeah. it's Jason. And his feelings are confusing. Well, thoughts are confusing. Thoughts are confusing. <laughs> sure. But, yeah. And I kind of like it, too, because, I mean, as much as Eleanor and Chidi have changed, they haven't changed as dramatically as Janet has. And when Jason and Janet were together, that was really Janet 1.0. Mm -hmm. And it makes a lot of sense that 
now her feelings would be so much more complicated about Jason. It wouldn't just be, well, Jason was a person who was near me, and so I love him. That's not Janet now. No. That is not Janet. So they would never be able to have that same relationship, and I will forever mourn for their beautiful first dance to um, Digital Get Down. But... And the tearaway sleeves? Have... Yeah, yeah! And the, you know, send nude pics of your heart to me and the whole thing was great. But we can't have that Jason and Janet anymore. They're not the same people anymore. No, but I think that now that we have grown up Janet, mm-hmm. evolved Janet. Ooh, mature. Mature Sophisticated Janet. Janet, Janet 3.0. Yeah, she's... I don't know. She, her feelings about Jason are so much more powerful and strong. Mm-hmm. And she really does care about him a lot. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that through every episode in season three. Just makes the relationship better. So last episode, I talked about how I thought that the committee was going to be a bunch of old white guys. Mm-hmm. And that was going to be part of the reason. Uh, and potentially there was like an element of co- collusion going on um they were really trying to keep a lot of people out and that's why they didn't have people in the last 521 years turns out i was wrong and i'm actually glad that i'm wrong like really wrong like really wrong like i'm super wrong super wrong i know i was so wrong (laughs) so you should keep messaging me about how wrong i am (laughs) um but it's actually a fairly diverse group of people and they all seem kind and well-intentioned although obviously very bureaucratic and frustrating let's be honest though they're kind of hipsters oh big time i was like wow (laughs) you guys seem like you all live in portland because farmers markets the vests the plaid shirts they live in yurts what did they say they live in yurts no but that's my (laughs) headcanon i don't want to live in a yogurt (laughs) oh right yurt for short sorry they all live in the same yurt oh my god okay um although i did notice okay and i feel like i have to point it out because of what i said last episode the two white people in the group are the ones that talk the most and they're the ones that give the orders and also (laughs) uh daisuke who's there doesn't say a damn word during this episode and that bugged me because i wanted to hear if his voice was going to be lovely and like deep Mm. i wanted to see it hear it whatever also does the good place have seasons? Because they're saying that Pluots are in season. Are they? Do they have seasons? Do they simulate seasons? I need to know. Jason, I need to know. I didn't know what a Pluot was. So I looked it up and it's <laughs> 75% plum and 25% apricot. And it was developed in the 80s. What? Yeah. Oh. We merged two fruit together? Yep. It's part of the stone fruits. Oh, like interesting. plums peaches yeah they're not really a thing i see here at the grocery store there you go also our window for peaches is like devastatingly small yeah it's like a couple of days and you miss it you're screwed <laughs> it's so sad <laughs> i love peaches um the chuck mm-hmm. committee member yeah he's uh he's kind of a jerk um... like we're like uh i think pluots are in season well then get pluots i mean what? Obviously, Kellen. Obviously, Kellen. Get the damn pluots. <laughs> what are you asking me for? Like, don't tell me. Just do it. Well, he's a little, he's got an element of sassiness, and I appreciate that. Later when he's saying, like, well, I mean, we did have dips before. Remember when everyone was stabbing each other? Okay. A little <laughs> sassy there. Calm it, Chuck. <laughs> but I think it's, it's, it is funny. It's cute. Oh, he also says every Bad Place employee is a disgusting monster. So I would think that... No, he doesn't say that. Someone else says that in the committee. Okay, someone else says that. Yeah, someone else in the committee says that. Regardless, yes. They are a little bit judgy, and I think they should feel like every Bad Place employee (laughs) should have the potential to be better. Okay, are you saying they need to get off their high horse? They need to get <laughs> off their high horse. Okay. And Michael's right. You're like, maybe not all of them are totally terrible. Fun man about town type of people. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great moment. Um, Now, the comment about like 2,000 years ago or 200,000 years ago when everyone started stabbing each other. 
is there more there? Like, I don't know. Like, that's are we saying when that's we... when weapons were invented? And then weapons just made it easier for people to kill other people? Tools. Yeah. When, when you know, monkeys and people... Don't... So that makes sense, right? Because the world evolved and then it became harder to be a good person in the sense of because not killing people. Because we discovered tools and now we can kill people. Yeah, to get their resources. Oh, I previously did not have a knife-like device to stab that person with to get their food, but now I do. So guess what I'm gonna do tonight? Yeah. I'm stabby, going crazy. Stabby. <laughs> and then the really fun moment with Kellen from the committee showering Michael with compliments. I feel like he would be a really amazing friend to have with you before a big presentation or a first date. You know, someone oh, yeah. just like really bolster your confidence. He's a hype guy. Yeah, I love it. But his compliments were accurate too. And they oh, yeah. weren't all focused on, like, Michael's appearance, you know, which would be, like, Eleanor's mom's go-to with the whole stretched out Alex Trebek thing. Like, he's complimenting on him on many things. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's good. Also, it's a nice thing to compliment your friends on a myriad of qualities that they have instead of only focusing on one thing. Oh, yeah. You're a really great artist, or you carry yourself with such pride, and... Yeah. You know, you smell delicious, or... You know... <laughs> you smell delicious? That sure. just sounds creepy. Okay. <laughs> well, if somebody that you know uses a nice fruity shampoo, you could say, wow, you really smell delicious today. And I might want to eat your head. <laughs> okay. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. And that's where you say, what? Don't. 3B. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> Should we move on? Probably. Okay. <laughs> Tahani attempts to cheer up Jason and Janet. Chidi and Eleanor enjoy their date, and he surprises her by wearing a mailman uniform. She bursts into tears, saying she's the happiest she's ever been, and it's all his fault. The committee tells Michael they'll look into the issue, but it'll take at least 1,400 years. Chidi is so smooth... During this entire date, the, like, just honestly, the confidence that completely radiates off of him. Is out of character. It, a little, okay, yeah, but, I'm gonna talk about that later, but, <laughs> it's really infectious, it really, like, made me feel happy when I was watching this episode, and I was totally getting why she was attracted to him, because, I don't know, just his attitude is so alluring i would say um and it was so funny when he's saying like oh well pop that bench and being like yeah well you are attracted to me and you totally blew it when you told me so i'm not even worried about it mm -hmm. i thought it was cute and then the mailman outfit oh my god oh my god so dorky he had to wear the hat had to wear the hat he looks like he's going on a safari what is that hat yeah he looks like the man with the yellow hat from curious george <laughs> he looks like such a dork and it is so adorable and i love how eleanor is so aggressively complimenting him when she's like i love the outfit and you look amazing and the way that Kristen bell says that i don't know i can't imagine being able to ever replicate it it was perfect truly a perfect moment <laughs> and then the oh is this a horny cry <laughs> <laughs> i like to imagine chidi has been on several dates where he's unsure if his date is crying because it's a horny cry but uh, it's never it never is <laughs> never never before today never before today <laughs> oh man and then tahani is actually super funny in this episode too um with the whole death did us part certificate and and saying, oh, well, I, I think I must have knocked it out of the park because you can't make eye contact with me. <laughs> and then deciding to cancel it and then rip it apart and then run away. Running away. I think it was honestly one of the funniest Tahani scenes to date. I still like Tahani going all Jack Torrance or Jack Nicholson from <laughs> The Shining at the Camilla's art exhibit. Yeah, fair, fair. I like this one a lot. I thought it was really cute. Plus it was sweet to honey like she was trying yes. to do something nice and just kind of flubbing and to honey is usually funniest at her most ineffectual mm. and i like that so 
Is that the the moment where Janet gets worried that she's going to have anxiety farts? <laughs> Which is definitely a real thing, I think. Well, I heard she's it from like, a friend. my feelings <laughs> might come out of my butt. Yeah. Oh, anxiety? Like, like feeling like nauseous or like getting like kind of an upset stomach because of anxiety? A hundred percent I feel that like all the time. It sucks. And the anxiety sweats? Very real. Also sucks. <laughs> Just anxiety in general and yeah, what it does to I, I feel it and it sucks. <laughs> so. What did you feel? Like, how did you feel about Eleanor and Chidi during this episode? Were you enjoying the two of them? Yeah, I thought it was really sweet. I just, I don't know. Chidi is very different. And I get why. Mm -hmm. It was just a little bit bizarre. It It was was almost like Bizarro World Chidi, like the opposite of Chidi. Yeah, I feel like it was pretty quick. He did a pretty... uh... It's like Chidi did a 180. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's there's a big change in this episode. And maybe that's all the, the absolute moral truth does to you. Just completely calms you and makes you relaxed and happy and makes you forget all your worries. Mm-hmm. It's like Hakuna Matata. Ah, what a wonderful phrase. Anyway, um, the committee just completely pisses me off at this moment. Ugh. This, so frustrating. This whole, it's not going to take more than 400 years, and then it's going to take another thousand years for someone to evaluate another person. Uh, uh, stop. It's the whole planning to take action instead of taking action. Mm. Or like, let's schedule a meeting to discuss the situation instead of let's just discuss it. We don't need to schedule a meeting for this. We'll just talk about it now. We don't need to plan for it. Let's just do it. Yeah, it reminds me of something <laughs> that my boss asked me to do, and she said, well, Vivian, I think we're just going to have to plan a committee for this, and then we can really, like, talk about it, and, and then we can get that thing done. And I was like, I could actually just do that thing in, like, half an hour, so how about <laughs> I just do that? And then I did the thing, and it's been great. So, yeah, I yeah. just... I even, like, I work in a nonprofit, and the bureaucracy is just, like, unbelievable and so frustrating how long it takes for actual change to happen. So long. I feel like you're waiting forever. Yeah, it must be absolutely aggravating, completely frustrating, and just makes you want to pull your hair out. So, as the millennials would say, and I am a millennial, it was hashtag too real. <laughs> I uh I hate myself a little for saying that. Okay. Why is there a hashtag on the phone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. Eleanor is scared of losing Chidi and he reassures her by saying that they should try to live in the moment. They run off to have sex while Tahani checks in with Michael. She vents to him that her attempts to be nice always backfire, which leads Michael to discover the real issue with the point system. Tahani gives Michael the puppy dog eyes. Does she? Yeah, because she's like, I want to talk to you about this thing, Michael. And he's like, no, no, we got really, real important matters to discuss. Yeah. And she just looks at him with these puppy dog eyes <laughs> and then he caves and is like, okay, what? <laughs> it was so great just to see it in action. Aw, that's cute. It's basically like Bambi eyes right there. Aw, I didn't even notice that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I really like his line of the Titanic is sinking and they're writing a strongly worded letter to the iceberg. So good. Yep. Whoever came up with that claps. Mm -hmm. Claps to them. I'm not going to actually clap. That would be annoying. (laughs) So with regard to the point system, I was pretty much on the right track last episode. I mean, the world has changed so dramatically that the point total of the same action, like getting flowers for your grandmother, has a totally different point total now. Right. So last episode when I talked about, well, wouldn't giving somebody a rock give you the same amount of points? Yeah, when Og gave Grog his rock. Right. So the same amount of points still... It is still the same amount of points. It's yeah. just there's so many more unintended consequences mm-hmm. that it screws everything up. 
So, intent matters, but so does unintent. Well, so does unintended consequences, right? right? Like, in the first one, in Douglas Weingar's file, um, some of the subtractions were resultant decrease of natural beauty of surrounding area and Mm -hmm. slight negative impact on local bees. But then, of course, in the modern day, that action now is about sweatshops and migrant workers and uh, billionaire CEOs that send pictures of their genitals to female employees. Uh, And also inhumane crimes against humans, cats, and one racehorse. One racehorse? Yeah. Seabiscuit is mad. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah there's so many more unintended consequences which mm-hmm. so do you know what that means what does that mean that chidi was most likely right about the almond milk dooming him because he was absolutely right most likely every time he was having a little bit of almond milk in his coffee it was all of a sudden all these negative like unintended consequences which right. he did kind of know about but probably thought weren't that bad And then there was, like, probably just a million things that he couldn't even think to factor in. Right. Right? Ugh. Ugh. Like, in the one example, like, the roses being cut by underpaid workforce in Chile, which also includes a deduction used to pay off local corrupt police force. Like, how could you even consider that when you're, you know, buying roses off the internet? Well, and the problem is, is that... You can't possibly be up to date on everything in the world at every moment. So as so things are changing, you could be supporting someone who has just been accused of, you know, murder. I don't know. Things. Horrible things. Right. And you wouldn't even know because you can't keep up with that much news. It's just impossible. Mm hmm. So basically, we are all doomed. That's basically what Michael figured out, that people are doomed because of all these unintended consequences. Literally because of the world we are born into, and that we have no choice to be born into. We didn't decide it. It just happened. So this point system is just completely and utterly outdated, and it doesn't work in the modern world. It's not that it's outdated. It's just that it includes unintended consequences as part of the evaluation well don't you feel like it should because intent has part of it right like if your intent is to do something really nice but you just keep getting terrible reactions for every little thing that you do all the unintended consequences i feel like they should matter oh for sure but but it's kind of ridiculous to just pile on like that like it's just well, it's you, so much i don't think that you should just, have i don't know you should be punished for something like this rose company having to pay their workers and pay the corrupt police department like if you're ordering from you know bucko's flowers online and it says that they're naturally sourced but they're lying like how is that your fault right i guess i don't know there has to be I, I can see scenarios where unintended consequences really need to be considered. And I can see other ones where it feels frustrating and way too blamey, I guess. Like, it just, well, it's like just Eleanor so harsh. Well, like Eleanor going to the coffee shop continuously, even after the owner has been charged with harassment. Yeah, yeah. That, and back she's, in season she one, knows yeah. that that's happening, but she mm-hmm. continues to do it. So that is the type of consequence that should matter because she knows about it she's aware of it okay so maybe there should be accommodations for what you're aware of and what you right learn about in the world okay because yeah if you decide to change your spending habits based on the fact that a ceo turns out to be a total scumbag Mm -hmm. yeah for sure that's that's something you can reasonably do um amazon jeff bezos (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) <laughs> that's something that you can reasonably do right mm-hmm. um but not knowing that there are corrupt police forces in chile you said yeah like how are we supposed to know that yeah mm. so it's just the whole thing was just incredibly frustrating mm-hmm. and it's so complicated that i can't really imagine how they're gonna fix it which is all the more frustrating because it's not like there's an obvious, like, solution in mind. There has to be a reboot of the system. 
So a complete yeah. reset of the Ooh, system. Of the system instead of our humans this time. <laughs> right. So it's not the people that need to be reset. Yes. Uh, but I think this is really, honestly, very good writing. Like, I was impressed with this being the issue. I think it's much more interesting to have a system that just didn't realize how many unintended consequences there would be because of globalization. Mm-hmm. Um, making the world so much more complex and making it so much more difficult to be a good person. I think that's so much more interesting than having the bad place just tampering with the system. Like, yeah, the bad guys are always going to be the bad guys. And that's just, it's fine. It's just not as inventive. This is more fun to think of it's, of it being an actual like systemic problem. Mm -hmm. So. And the thing is that and it reflects our real world. Yeah. There are a lot of problems out there in a lot of our social systems. Sean knows about the, this problem with the system, and he alluded to it last time we saw him. So, like, I feel like bad place management, they mm-hmm. know all about this and are just laughing. Oh, yeah. They're just thinking this is just great. Because they're just raking in the souls. So then back to Eleanor and Chi on their date once Eleanor's crying. Um The quote that Chidi brings up is not only relevant to Chidi and Eleanor, but to this situation. He says, the only, there is only one time that is important now. It is the only time where we have any power. Michael and the others actually have a chance to make real and lasting change to the moral order of the afterlife in this moment right now. Mm -hmm. And they're taking their chance. And I love that. They're seizing the day. Yeah. And the committee is hardballing Mm -hmm. and saying, nope. We have to do all these other things. And Michael's like, no, now. This is happening now. People are being tortured now. Yeah. People aren't getting into the good place right now. Like, right this second. As I'm talking, millions of people are probably just going to the bad place because it's the only place they can go. Ah. (laughs) So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In my notes here, uh, and what I was trying to say not very eloquently earlier was that Chidi has so much charm in this episode. Um, And looking at him, or just watching him look up at Eleanor in her chair and try and calm her down, big swoon. Big swoon. (laughs) So, end of eloquence right there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and we also get uh, Chidi not wanting to assume that Eleanor means sex when she says she wants to try something. So we still get a little bit of that, like, old, uncertain Chidi who says maybe they should both write down what they think that she means. I think that was fun. That was a nice way, too, to just have uh, a guy on TV who's not like, oh, well, you obviously mean sex because you want to have sex with this ripping bod, blah, blah, blah. Girls all want me, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Guy. <laughs> Whatever. But it Way was... to generalize. <laughs> yeah, let's generalize about men, you know? <laughs> But it's another situation where let's put off doing this right now. Mm. Let's write it down. Let's discuss what you're... Let's think about it, how it's going to happen. And then Eleanor's like, no, now. Let's go to Bangtown. Yep, yep. (laughs) It's upstairs and it's in a closet. It's the only time where we have any chance to have sex. (laughs) (laughs) That's how that quote should go. Uh. (laughs) So Hani apologizes to Janet for meddling, and they both start crying. Jason joins them, crying because he likes to be a part of things. Eleanor and Chidi walk in, announcing to the room that they just had sex. Gwendolyn discovers the whole group is lying, and she says she'll have to turn them into the judge. But Michael has already spoken to the judge, and they're all going to meet her at IHOP. What? Oh my god, IHOP? Call back to IHOP from season yeah. two. Yeah! Where the pancake eats you. Yeah, the pancake eats you. And then Jason said, well, I'll get eggs then. (laughs) (laughs) I can only imagine what the egg does to you. Yeah. (laughs) It hatches you. Yeah. (laughs) So what I wanted to say earlier was that the humans are all a little bit different in this episode. And I think that's because they're in some way kind of in the good place, right? Like they're in the middle of it, stuck somewhere, but... Mm -hmm. It has an effect. Um, We see the effect most obviously, I think, on Chidi because he's so confident. But we also see Eleanor allowing herself to be vulnerable and she's not 
pushing Chidi away. Yeah, she yells and says, like, I'm the happiest I've ever been and I blame you and everything, but she doesn't leave the room. She doesn't um, reject uh, or make fun of him when he's actually trying to calm her down and cheer her up. Mm-hmm. Um, Tahani is more caring and self-aware. Like, she actually tries to do something really nice for Janet and Jason, and there's no ulterior motive. Like, this isn't going to do any good for her. She just genuinely cares about these people and want wants to help. And she's self-aware enough to realize that all of her efforts are backfiring. And then actually apologizes sincerely, right? Uh, And then we get Jason that's more focused and really honest with his feelings. And he doesn't push Janet either to talk about it. He understands we need to take a beat here. I just think it's really nice to see. And I'm interested to see how they're going to continue to change if they do actually make it into the good place by Mm -hmm, the end of the mm -hmm. season. And I am like crossing my fingers that we get the proper real good place neighborhood at the end of the season i want that i don't know if it's gonna happen but i want it because it's so close we're four oreos away jason Maybe four just oreos a glimpse. just a glimpse anything just something Ugh, i just it's so close i could taste it yeah you know and it tastes like oreos the icing cookie goodness <laughs> yeah I like Gwendolyn's fish shaking that turns into waving. It's very cute. Uh, And then at the end when she's like, bye, it was nice to meet you. Even though she knows that they're all lying. (laughs) It just goes on slightly too long. Yeah. Um, And like you mentioned, we get a callback to IHOP, which is the interdimensional hole of pancakes, which was mentioned last season in Rhonda, Diane, Jake, and Trent. Uh, when all the humans went to the bad place for the first time. Mm-hmm. Wow. The blood. bad place, like, hey, headquarters. Yeah. So, Jason, now that we know this information about the point system, we understand a little bit more about the committee and the good place, how in the fork does Mindy St. Clair fit into this? The same way she fit into it before? How did this happen, though? Like, how did she make it into a medium place instead of the bad place. Mm -hmm. She's the only person that that's happened to in the last 521 years. Well, they had two cases, right? Or was it three cases? Right, potentially, because there was, there might have been one somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. I think Michael Schur just kind of left it open because in case. Yeah, just in case. Yeah. With the introduction of unintended consequences making up for so much of people's point total, like... Did she just not get those unintended consequences because she wasn't alive for that part? Because, like, even though starting this charity and everything, there would have still been unintended consequences. In some way, there would have. Even if it was helping every nation in every way. It just would have happened. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe she didn't get those consequences, those consequential points, because she was dead. Mm -hmm. Because all the unintended consequences happened later. And since there would never been a situation like this, they just didn't know what to do. Right. So we'll probably get a, a, you know, a discussion about that in the next couple episodes or maybe even season four. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'd like to see Mindy again. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen her this season, you know, and so far we've been seeing her once a season. I know we only have two to really go off of, but it'd be nice to see her again. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the interdimensional hole of pancakes is going to look like? Like an actual IHOP? Probably. Oh, I think that'd be cute. Yeah. <laughs> With Janice's as servers. Ooh. I don't know. Mm, maybe. Just a bunch of them. Or pancakes serving you? The pancakes <laughs> are the servers? I don't know. We'll find out tonight. Oh, yeah. That's true. We're we recording this about an hour before the episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So do you want to get to our mailbag? We have a couple of messages this week. And And she's she's buying buying a stairway to to (laughs) mailbag. Maybe it should be mailbags. That's too late. Whatever. (laughs) So our first piece of mail comes from Mario Lee at Mario Lee 69739363. Fly (laughs) FM. He says, there are some issues with your host's analysis. One... By the way, we're the hosts. Uh, We run the Twitter. (laughs) 
But (laughs) number one, the system does update itself at some point within 500 years at minimum when American coins were created, as there is a coinage department. Uh, Yes, we did say, or I... I said in the last episode that the main feed in the accountant's office was obviously not updated. Uh, It's a good point. American coins, not a thing back in 1497 or whatever year it was. Um, Number two, the whole 5% actually does make sense in terms of just like you do not want heaven to be necessarily an easy thing to do. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I would probably disagree on the whole 5% thing, though. I don't feel like 5% of the world's population... I don't feel like only 5% of the world's population is good enough to get into the good place. I Mm -hmm. mean, it's the good place. It's not the great place. It's not the excellent place. It's (laughs) not the, like, fantabulously amazing, oh my god, extravaganza place. It's not, like, the the good place. place. Exactly. So, (laughs) really, I'm just saying that I feel... As though the world is comprised of more than just 5% good people. I agree. I mean, we have nothing to base this on, but... Feeling? Yeah. I base it on feeling. I feel like more than 5% of the people I meet deserve to go to a good place. Yeah, for sure. Or at least a medium place. Not a bad place. I don't feel like they should be tortured endlessly. Right. Um, Mario goes on to say... Also, the point of a person in 1497 caring for the elderly may be more relatively altruistic than Tani, as her reasons were to get her parents' praise only. So now we see, because of the unintended consequences and everything, and how much intent doesn't actually matter as much as we thought it Mm -hmm. did, that kind of makes me wonder even more about Tahani. But I guess a lot of the unintended consequences could have been because of her tendency to shame other people, um, to, like, make herself better than others, right? So the way she probably actually spoke to people was a big issue. Because the way that she talked to Eleanor in season one or the way that she speaks to people... It's just awful. On Earth. It's not great. She's probably hurting a lot of people's feelings. And every time she flies a plane, it's probably all these consequences of, you know, where does the fuel come from? How is it sourced? Et cetera. You know, how is the plane built? And the rubber on the tires was naturally found. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, And then the last thing he says is, also, the coin sex thing could be considered bad in terms of wasteful. As Michael was asking about evaluation criteria of new actions, including resource use, um, being confirmed by Neil. Well, let's reuse the coins then. Yeah. Well, just because you had a good time with them doesn't mean they can't be used for other things. But the fruit or vegetable or whatever it was. It was an eggplant. It was an eggplant vegetable. That's probably wasteful. Yes. If that was the only yes. intended yes. purpose. And those vegetables were probably picked off of a something farm with bad sure. people on it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our next piece of mail comes from Alpine Magician on Tumblr. And they say, due to the flawed point system that takes away points for good actions with unintended consequences, technically by killing someone, you're eliminating a factor of harm towards Earth as a whole. Humans are seen as cockroaches to the demons So, to Earth, they're probably worse. Humans contribute to pollution, war, and basically destroy Earth, so getting rid of them could gain you points. Side note, if nobody has gotten into the good place in 521 years, then Janet was wrong when she said Lincoln was the only U.S. president to be in the good place. I think Michael was actually the one who said Lincoln was the only president to go to the good place. Hmm. But... Janet did tell us that Christopher Columbus ended up in the bad place for all the slave trade, genocide, and raping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But this is, it's an interesting point because humans do tend to use a lot of resources Mm -hmm. for every person that's alive. That's, you know, hundreds of chickens or, you know, dozens of cows or whatever. So we do actually have a huge impact on the earth. Oh, 100%. We have giant carbon footprint, all that, right? But you know, does the accounting department, did it start when humans started? Or was it around before, you know, microbes were getting points? Like, it doesn't seem to make sense because you wouldn't, the good place and the bad place seem to be only for humans. 
Right. So the accounting department likely started when there were humans. That means all dogs don't go to heaven, Jason. I didn't say that. I said there might be another department for animals. Okay. All right. Good. And well, all probably cats. not. All cats too. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, it is it like it is a really interesting point because we are creating havoc, and I mean, there's a lot of people out there who really just feel like you shouldn't add to the world's population but, because of the negative impact we have on the earth. But the whole point of the good place and bad places aren't for the goodness of the earth. It certainly seems in a way like it, uh, like some of the unintended consequences being like decreasing the natural beauty of a certain area Mm -hmm. or you know having a negative impact on bees like the earth matters right to the good place i don't think the earth doesn't matter i think that the fact that killing people is just something that they would consider morally wrong like Mm -hmm. taking a life from someone is just morally wrong right okay and all the unintended consequences that come from that perhaps that person was going to go on to cure cancer and that kind of thing so maybe Um, they're like the if you saw the breakdown of points if you saw like you know joe killed schmo or og kills grog and they get you know a bunch of points because they've lessened the impact on the environment but the amount of points that they lose would be way too high yeah because the act itself would just be considered like morally sure like evil right yeah i get Um, 10 points because i'm doing more for the environment but i I went down like a million points because i killed him yeah so wah wah plus unintended consequences of you know causing grief to a family negatively impacting uh an area making people feel unsafe etc etc right right um, but really interesting. I didn't think about that at all. So thank you very much yeah, for your that's, that's totally uh, for your question, or for your theory. I like that. Yeah, you know, it's a fun thought experiment. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason, any last thoughts before we say goodbye? Bring on the next episode. All right. Our next episode is titled "Chidi Sees the Time Knife." I have no idea what that could possibly mean, so I'm very excited. What if there's time travel involved, or time freezing involved? Or, or what time... if it's just cutlery? Oh. <laughs> time knife? Ooh, maybe. Because they're going to IHOP. Maybe they go see, oh, right. Maybe they go see Father Time. Ooh. And he finds his knife. Or he goes back in time. To visit Og and Grog. <gasps> what if Og was cheaty? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Enough pus. Posturizing. Posture. Postulating. Postulating. Yeah. It sounds like undulating. Yeah, it's a weird Both word. Both of those are weird. <laughs> so we only have two more episodes left this season. And so now I'm putting it out there. Listeners, how do you think this season is going to end? Do you think we're going to get to see a glimpse, as Jason says, of the good place? Um, just how do you think it's going to go? Because I am unsure. <laughs> I'm very unsure. I do not know it's where weird, we're going, Michael's and I love it. Sure, but we're not. Oh my god, that's terrible. And we're gonna end on that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, we haven't said that. Brings us to the end. Okay. Hi, I'm Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to the end of Forking Bullshirt, a multiverse radio production. If you like the show, please leave us a amazing rating and a glowing review on iTunes because this is absolutely the best way for others to find the show. And if you want to get in touch with us, we're on Twitter at Multiverse Radio. You can tag your thoughts with F Bullshirt. We're also on Facebook and Tumblr at Multiverse Radio Podcast. Um, and we run the No Context Good Place account. And basically, we just love the good place. Talk to us about it all the time, please. And you can email us from our website, uh, www.multiverseradio.ca. And we will see you next week. We will talk at you next week because that's really more um, accurate. Hey, you could send us a photo, then we'll see you. Yeah. We won't send a photo back. That's weird. (laughs) Bye. Bye. As people on the internet would say, that's awful. Wait. What? (laughs) (laughs) Only people on the internet say, that's awful. (laughs) That was great. Okay. Stretched out Alec Trebek. Alex Trebek? Okay. I was trying to think if it was Alec or Alex. They're literally like playing They're jazz upstairs. Just jazzing it up. 
We just say claps. Claps, claps. Claps. Just like when claps. people are like, sigh. <laughs> you can just sigh. You could just sigh. <sighs> <laughs> Must be. I know. Oh, yeah. That jazz, jazz is so jazz. distracting. We're gonna have okay. to put a disclaimer at the. Uh, start There's the a little episode. bit of jazz in this episode. <laughs> Are they like legit upstairs playing these instruments? Like yep. this isn't a recording? I think okay. they're actually doing it. All right, cool. Well, they're good. <laughs>